All right, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us, the St. Louis chapter, um, to kick off its many women webinars for 2021. Um, my name is Tamara Clinton, co-chair of programming for the STL PRSA chapter. First, let me run down some rules and to allow for time, we ask that you keep your phones muted during our presentation. If you would like to ask a question related to the topic, please feel free to submit your questions within that chat. They will be read aloud to the presenter at the time that is available. If you are unable to submit via chat, please hold your questions till the end and we will hope open up the mics for you. Please remember to be respectful of all others who may also have questions during that time. Our webinar today is called 21 Tips to Level Up personally and professionally in 2021, presented by Kakisha Brannigan. Kakisha is a multi-talented public relations professional and a board member of the PRSA St. Louis chapter. Kakisha is the marketing and public relations coordinator for Volkert Incorporated an infrastructure-based engineering firm. Kakisha holds a BA in communications from Lindenwood University and an AA in paralegal studies from Southwestern Illinois. Kakisha is also the creator of a community platform that teaches and empowers single mothers to break the cycle of poverty called Breaking Statistics. In addition to being a busy professional, she's an equally busy entrepreneur and volunteer for her community within Junior Achievement and Project Compassion for her church. She is the owner of Mystique Salon and Spa for Men and Women and Children in Belleville, Illinois, and a loving mother of seven. Without further delay, let's get things started and welcome Kakisha Brannigan to our afternoon session. Kakisha? Thank you so much for that great introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for being here today on our very first PRSA St. Louis chapter webinar of 2021. 2020 was exciting. We had some awesome webinars that we offered then. And so we're going to continue in that same energy. And we're going to bring you some dynamic and some awesome webinars for 2021. And I happen to be the first host, the first presenter for this year. And we're gonna cover 21 tips to help you level up personally and professionally for this year. These tips are meant to just take one at a time, not to be initiated all at once. Um, and it's just small tips to help you do things that may be something common that you hadn't thought of, or maybe just to reiterate something that you lost during 2020 or at any other time. But they're a fun field, they're knowledge, and they're just basic information that, help, that would help you grow and eat the elephant of life one small bite at a time. So without further ado, let's hop right on into it. Okay, if you're taking notes, I will try to be very, very slow and I'll try to make sure that I speak so that you can understand. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, they will be fielded at that time. We can also ask questions at the end. I'll do a recap when I get to the 10th one so that you can go ahead and recap your notes, anything that you may have missed. And then the last 11, I'll go back through again. So let's get started. Our first tip. Be a continuous learner. Always be willing to learn. Whether it's through professional development or a continued education hours, you can also look at things for personal. I know a lot of times we get wrapped up in what it is that we need to do professionally with our continued education and developing ourselves. But as a person, we need to also be looking at ways that we can develop ourselves when it pertains to personally. So that means, growing yourself in your knowledge base, finding out some things that you may be interested in, such as crafting, um, anything that would help self-motivation, self-care, self-awareness. Number two, network with others. Um, being a part of PRSA and being in the marketing and the public relations world, it's a natural thing for us to network but it's also natural for people to stay within their own group of people. In order to get out and grow professionally or personally, you have to interact with others, whether it's people that are around you that you can tap into, or whether it's people that you don't know. Try to interact with other people, develop contacts, exchange info with them. I do word association uh, when I meet someone. 
Um, we usually exchange cards, business cards, or information. We'll do social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, um, or even LinkedIn. But I try to do word association with that person so that I'll remember, or I'll try to find something about that person and help me remember that contact. Most importantly, when you network with others, make sure you follow up. Follow up is key. You can have all the information in the world, but if you're not utilizing it by following up, you're really not building that relationship and you're really not truly networking. Number three, surround yourself with people who are where you want to be or are where you're going. I call this finding your tribe. If you want to go up, you have to put yourself in a position to go up. You have to change the dynamic of who you're around and what you put into your self-thought. Number four, keep yourself open to all opportunities, even if they aren't ideal. Sometimes we gain things from those things that we just figure are not for us. Sometimes taking a step backwards helps us to excel and take five or six steps forward. So always keep yourself open to an opportunity even though it may not be ideal, there's always a lesson, always a lesson there. Number five, stay optimistic, even when it doesn't look favorable. So being optimistic is to be hopeful and to be confident. You have to walk through things as though you're confident and, and, and as though they are. Um, if you're not exuberating confidence, people can see that. Your body language can also bring that to the forefront. You want to stay optimistic and you want to stay hopeful in everything that you do. Number six, be intentional with keeping your home work life separate. Disconnect from those things that don't allow you to be present in that current role. I know being at home, it can be so hard to separate those roles especially with COVID and especially with all the responsibilities we have outside of our work and outside of our family. It's all now become one big ball. So you still have to maintain that balance. If you're at work, whether you're at, if your work environment is now your home environment, set up parameters to where work is work during those hours you are at work. And when you are off work, get up from the computer wherever you are and spend time with your family, get to know your loved ones, spend time with your animals, just have some time to kind of deflect. But trying to do the two of them together can cause a lot of confusion, it can cause a lot of chaos, and you'll find yourself in a position where you haven't given your all to either position. So try your best and be intentional with separating your home work life space. Number seven, Use the resources around you to accomplish balance. Most of the time we look at our resources as money, but our resources are the people around us, the materials around us, supplies around us, and strategies that we put into place. An example of that can be have a parenting tribe to help you balance if you have to be at work and you have children that are at home. Schedule appointments for doctor's appointments, dentist appointments on the weekend so that it doesn't interfere during your week as much as you possibly can. Um, attend conferences. Right now we have to attend conferences or webinar via Zoom or whatever social media platform that it is, but try to use those things as opportunities to grow and to figure out how to utilize the resources around you. Number eight. Write a five most important things to do list every day to accomplish your daily goals. Now, I know a lot of times we feel as though we can remember things and we keep it in our head, but if we put it on paper, we are actually putting into the atmosphere the things that need to be done and we're setting us a plan. So I know for work, I have a five most important things list and for home, I have a five most important things list. Now be aware that it doesn't have to be big things. It could be as small as checking your email. It can be um, sending an email off, ordering business cards, putting a proposal together. Those are things that you know you're gonna have to do throughout your workday, but 
put those things down so that you see them, okay? That way it's a little bit easier to kind of know where you're going because if, if it's anything, if work is anything for you like it is for me, you're gonna have what I call reactionary items that are gonna come up. They're gonna be fires that are gonna immediately need to be put out. And you're gonna have to be taken away from those things that are on your list in order to solve whatever that fire may be at the moment. But if you have a list, it brings you back to a focus point of what needs to get done. And that helps you accomplish some chaos and makes you feel as though you're in a good space and you've gotten things done, okay? Number nine, as you accomplish things on that list, check off that list so that you feel a sense of accomplishment. It's nothing like knowing that, okay, check, I got that done. Check, I got that done. You know, sometimes we sit and we really beat ourselves up about things that we know we need to do. Oh, I needed to do the laundry today. I didn't get it done. Celebrate those small things that you, the, the small things that you do get done. You got the laundry done. You got dishes done. You got the meal planned. You meal prepped. You walked the dog. Those are all small things. Every small thing leads to a bigger thing. So check those things off and celebrate those accomplishments as they come along, okay? Number 10, if you see a void, fill it. Don't wait on others to do so. It's very important that we are a solution to a problem. We have enough problems going on and if we can all be a little bit of a solution to help um, the situation flow a little bit better, we should do so. We shouldn't wait um, for someone else to come along and do what we can do at that moment. So I know I ran through 10 pretty quick. So I'll go back through and, and recap, okay? Our first one is be a continuous learner. Our second is to network with others. Number three is to surround yourself with people who are where you wanna be or where you're going. Number four is to keep yourself open to all opportunities, even if they aren't ideal. Number five, stay optimistic, even when it doesn't look favorable. Number six, be intentional with keeping your home work life separate. Disconnect from anything that can cause you not to be present in your current role. Number seven, use resources around you to accomplish balance. Number eight, Write a five most important things to do list every day to accomplish daily goals. Number nine, check off your list as you accomplish the items on that list. Number 10, if you see a void, fill it. Don't wait on others to do so. Okay, so let's go into the second set. Number 11, take initiative. When you take initiative to do things, you're taking ownership. And taking ownership causes a process or an action to begin. So take initiative to do what needs to be done or to start something. Nobody's going to do it if you don't take ownership over it. It's your dream. You take ownership over it. Don't wait to be directed is number 12. There's no reason to wait to be directed. If you know what the second step is in a five-step process, take the second and the third step. Don't wait on someone to tell you to take that second and third and fourth step to get to the end results. Number 13, you don't need a title to be a leader, just lead. Oftentimes we feel as though once we receive the title, now we're in a position to lead. But the process of being a leader starts way before you get the title. OK, and a lot of times if you don't start the process, you are you you won't find that you are a leader. We are leaders in our natural lives. We are mothers. We are sons. We are fathers. We are aunts, uncles, cousins, big sisters, big brothers, um, as we may be matriarchs of our families. But we are all in positions where we take lead on something. And you don't wait for that particular instance to come up to lead, you just lead. It makes things flow a little bit easier. Number 15, be confident in yourself and in your abilities. Number 16, find a mentor or a coach. That is very important for self-development um, and professional development as well to find and connect with a mentor or find a coach. Now there is a difference. 
usually your mentors are developmentally driven and your coaches are performance driven. Your mentors give you professional experience that they've come into relationship with and your coaches usually evaluate and they give you feedback. Your mentors are usually long-term while your coaches are for a specific time period. Your mentors can be personal and professional while your coaches are strictly professional. Your mentors are experts in the industry and your coaches are experts in getting you to where you need to be. Your mentors are usually unpaid and it's a volunteer basis and your coaches are paid. So find out what works best for you and connect with either a mentor or a coach. Number 17, fill your space and your environment with positive affirmations, scriptures, and your goal. For example, a vision board. I've created a vision board. I have a vision journal. I have a goal journal. I'm constantly keeping um, what I want to have in 2021 around me so that my conscious and my subconscious both catch that. And then I began to manifest those things. Affirmations. Affirmations are really, really important. What are affirmations? Glad you asked. Affirmations are proven methods of self-improvement. They're the ability to purify your thoughts and reconstruct your brain to believe the things you can achieve. They require work, action, and consistency. They are not magic pills. What are some examples of um, some affirmations? I am courageous. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. I am whole. I am confident. I am forgiving. I am grateful. I am blessed. I am generous. I am gifted. I am strong. I am anointed. I am favored. I am successful. I am able. I am powerful. I am fruitful. I am healthy. I am beautiful. All of those I am statements are affirmations. They help you to reconstruct your thought process so that you can have a positive outlook on the things that are going on in your life. Your subconscious can begin to take that in and you can reconstruct your brain to believe everything that you are saying. So far, so good. Do we have any questions? No, not at this time. Perfect, sounds good. All right, number 18, be warm. There's nothing like being warm, being open, walking in into an area, your body language is open, you're happy, you're exuberating joy. It changes the dynamic of the room and the people that are around you. So you always wanna look to be warm, um, not necessarily warm and fuzzy where you know, you're overly warm, but to be warm and to be bright, especially in a work environment, that's always pleasing to people. And, and it does have the ability to change the atmosphere um, where you are. So you always wanna make sure that you're warm. Be competent. Being competent is important. And if you put being warm and competent together, that's a superpower. You're, you're a superhero because you can be warm, you can be likable, and you're knowledgeable. You're, you're the best in your skill set. So that's what that's what really we need to aim at doing professionally and personally. Number 19, smile more often than not. It it costs nothing to smile. You don't know who's been through something where they need your smile and your smile can change their their day. Or smile for yourself, change your own mind frame by offering yourself a smile. Looking at yourself in the mirror, giving yourself a smile, saying positive affirmations has the ability to change your mindset. Again, we have to change our mindset in order to do some of these things that I've listed above so that we can be better people, okay? Number 20, be authentically you. The imposter syndrome time is over. If we've learned nothing else during 2020 is authenticity. It's important to be who you are, 
bring yourself to the table so that people understand who you are and appreciate you for who you are at that moment. Number 21, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is just a feeling. The failure would be in not trying. So those are our 21 tips. Let me go back over the last 11 that we did. Number 11 was take initiative, with initiative being you taking ownership um, and it causes you to have an action or a process to begin. Number 12, don't wait to be directed. Number 13, you don't need a title to be a leader, just lead. Number 14, be confident in yourself and your abilities. Number 16, find a mentor and a coach. And again, just to recap some of those things, um, we know our mentors are volunteer bases, our coaches are paid, our mentors are usually long-term and coaches are for a specific time. Um, our mentors help us develop and our coaches are more performance-based, okay? Um, mentorship can usually be a personal and a professional relationship and coaches are usually just strictly, strictly business. Number 16, fill your space environment with positive affirmations, scriptures, and goals. And if anybody would like those I am statements, um, I will repeat those. If you put that in the chat, I'll read back over those with no problem. Number 17, be warm. Number 18, be competent. Oh, I'm sorry, that's number 19, be competent. Number, I'm sorry, that was number 18. Number 19, smile more often than not. Number 20, be authentically you. Bring you to the table at all times. And number 21, don't be afraid to fail. The failure is just a feeling. The failure is in not trying, not in the feeling itself. So this has been a presentation of our 21 tips to help you level up personally and professionally in 2021. If you'd like to have a free copy of this e-sheet, feel free to connect with me at www.momsbreakingstatistics.com. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Moms Breaking Statistics or Kakisha Yvette. And you can search me on Facebook at Kakisha Brannigan, or you can connect with our Breaking Statistics platform on Facebook and just search for Breaking Statistics. We offer daily, uh, daily aspirations, daily affirmations. There's also a question of the week. Um, are there any questions, Tim? No, ma'am, not at this time. I will take this time to thank everyone for participating and I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you are interested in seeing more from the St. Louis chapter, please keep us in mind and save us in your Facebook and keep an eye out and continue to visit our website pages.